Well, good afternoon, everybody. As part of our fiscal 16 budget, we're proposing a series of initiatives to um, mitigate and hopefully over time end the use of shelters and hotels and motels, especially hotels and motels, for families in troubled circumstances here in the Commonwealth. Simple truth of the matter is at a point in time when family homelessness has actually been falling nationally, it's been increasing in Massachusetts to the point where the amount of family homelessness in Massachusetts is a human tragedy that clearly must be rethought and reconsidered with respect to how these families are served. As part of our budget, we're proposing strategies to reverse this terrible trend. And these pro proposals will focus primarily on what I would call prevention and the front end. This will keep families in their communities. That's goal number one. And hopefully, out of long, long, long-term stays in hotels and motels, far away from their schools where their children attend school, and far away from their support systems. These reforms will not only cut down on the cost of the state, but cut down on the terrible toll that homelessness takes on parents and their kids. To do this, we're proposing that the Executive Office of Health and Human Services take the lead in executing these reforms in partnership with the Department of Housing and Economic Development. The reason for having HHS serve as the primary lead on these issues is because they bring a familiarity with case management and the ability to access services in a quick and diligent manner that can be used to meet families <coughs> where their concerns are at the point at which they first present. In addition to these new and aggressive tactics, we are also proposing in our budget a $20 million End Family Homelessness Reserve Fund. And that fund will provide tailored and flexible short-term assistance for families with a goal of rapid housing stabilization. These resources can be used flexibly for prevention, diversion, and stabilization, depending upon the unique needs of each family. We are also planning to reinvigorate the Special Initiative for the Homeless Mentally Ill, which was enormously successful in the 1990s in providing housing and support services to homeless individuals battling mental illness. And finally, we will also be adding additional funds to the home-based program, which provides short-term housing assistance to families in need. With that said, I'm going to turn the podium over to the Lieutenant Governor. Thank you. We do feel this is uh, the best approach, uh, most importantly for those individuals and families that find themselves trending towards homelessness. Uh, this also has a significant impact on the communities that are hosting hotels and shelters for these individuals that, in large part, are being removed from a place where they have meaningful ties, which under our proposal, we'd like to support them there. Because when they are moved to a community miles and miles away from where they have those ties, it often takes a toll on that host city or town in terms of the cost to their public health department, cost to their law enforcement, their police and their fire departments, and certainly a cost to their schools when families and individuals transition in temporarily. So we feel that this will have not only a positive impact on the helping that individual get on a path toward self-sufficiency and success, but also assist the communities that are hosting these hotels. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Secretary Sutters. Do you realize I'm the only one who needs glasses? I just use really big print. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Um, thank you, Governor and Lieutenant Governor, um, for your commitment to children and families who are homeless or who are at risk of homelessness. You know, for so many of us, we take for granted when we cross the thresholds and close that front door into our homes. I was poignantly reminded of the plight of individuals and families who are without homes last Wednesday when participating with Mayor Walsh during the annual homeless count. As the governor has stated, Massachusetts has experienced a skyrocketing increase in the number of homeless families. Today, this very day, 
There are over 5,000 families in our emergency shelter system, including shelters and motels. Clearly, we need a different approach. The current one has not been effective. We will implement a human services driven approach, working very closely with our state housing partner. The de facto goal has been emergency shelter. We need to ensure that our goal is housing stabilization. Entering the family shelter system is completely disruptive for children and families and is costlier than homeless prevention and intervention. As recently pointed out in the report on solid ground building opportunity, preventing homelessness is cost effective. We will develop multiple strategies that facilitate families out of homeless shelters and meet the needs of families who are at risk of homelessness at the very front door of emergency assistance. Working with expert providers, we will invest in family homeless prevention strategies that provide flexible wraparound services to families at risk. We will provide not aggressive, but assertive case management <laughs> who will partner with each family to identify their unique needs. There's no such thing as a homogeneous homeless population. Every person in every family who is homeless has very unique needs. We will partner with each family to identify their needs and we will develop specific plans to achieve not only housing stability, but to access identified services, whether it's childcare, education, job training, job training, financial management skills, rental assistance, medical care, substance abuse, mental health treatment, or access to do domestic violence services. Family goals will be specific, measurable, attainable, and relevant. One major benefit of this approach, if we are successful, we will maintain families in their communities rather than placing them in a motel far from their supports and their child's school. <clears throat> We will also track the data to measure how effective we are in addressing family homelessness in the Commonwealth. Hopefully this will reduce the number of homeless families and the length of stay in shelters, resulting in savings that will be invested in the reserve fund and for other important essential health and human services. Thank you. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Tom Lorello, who is the Executive Director of Heading Homes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm here just to lend our support to the governor's plan. Um, we uh, operate over 400 units of permanent supported housing in Greater Boston, and we also operate about 100 shelters. And uh, we think that the governor's plan is the right thing to do. I think it, it hits on all of the important principles for what needs to happen to end homelessness in the Commonwealth. Um, very excited to bring the, the special initiative to house the homeless mentally ill. Back. That was my all, one of my all-time favorite policies. Um, I think um, there's just a lot to recommend it, including that it leverages um, additional federal resources. Uh, and the mentally ill are among the most vulnerable of the people that are on the streets. And they shouldn't be out there. And I'm glad the governor is focusing on that. And we know that getting them housed with support services works. There's no reason for them to be out there. And I'm really happy that there's a focus on that. And on the family side, I would just underline um, everything that the governor and lieutenant governor and, and Mary Lou Sutter said, um, that when a family's in a hotel or when they're homeless for a long period of time, they just get derailed. They just get derailed. And we know that if we can prevent their homelessness or get them into housing, they're in a position where they can take advantage of supports and move forward in life. So um, thank you, governor, for this plan. We appreciate it. Charles, do you want to offer something from the Metro West area. Thank you, Governor. My name is Charles Ganyu. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of the South Middlesex Opportunity Council. Governor, we've committed our agency to finding creative solutions for individuals and families. The solution is housing with supported services customized for each family. At the end of the day, what we want to do is get a self-sufficiency plan for each family with workforce development, education support so folks can live successfully in the community. We work very hard, but we can work smarter, and we need to work differently. And this solution, I think, is something that is going to be a huge step forward in helping the families, individuals in homelessness. And um, you have my commitment. We'll give it our best. <laughs>